Hey everyone, today I want to talk about brown sunglasses. We did grays last week, so now we're going to jump into what makes a good brown lens and why you would choose one of these to use for your next favorite sunglasses and why you might need a few of them sitting around even if you thought you hated brown. So let's take a look at a couple of different browns, see how it looks out in the real world. These in particular, really good enhancing contrast. You'll like this one. Now, on to what you guys actually care about looking at. Obviously not my face, but these sunglasses and all of the pretty colors they can be made in. I've got one to kind of show you the difference here. This is a very soft neutral gray. If you're interested in learning more about grays and their different uses, I'll link a card up here in that video and of course put some notes down in the description on that as well. But this is going to be the more contrast enhancing brown, this one's a little bit harder to find. You're not going to see it in most places. It's a little bit more in the yellow spectrum. This is pretty darn close to an amber, but it's not quite there. You can see it's got a noticeable tinge of yellow to the lens. And you'll see when we actually turn this one around that you get a very nice boost in overall contrast and color. Of course, the camera adjusts to it, but you can see real quick that we get that nice little yellow warm shift and a strong boost in the contrast in that lens. And generally, that's going to be the main use for browns. It's to cut down blue light, which really reduces strain on the eyes, especially in really hazy situations. A lot of the browns are going to be darker, which helps in cutting the intensity, but still adding back a little bit of contrast. So some of these, the lighter ones like this, are going to be more for your hazy days to really just boost that contrast up without getting into a full orange lens if you don't like a really strong shift in the light spectrum. Now this one, getting back to that more neutral brown, this is the one you're going to find more commonly, where it's just that light, kind of a rosy brown, darkens things up a little bit, doesn't make a really strong mired shift in color. You see it doesn't give kind of that yellowy effect, there's not much of a contrast enhancement. You get that little bit of a shift, but the camera recovers even quicker from that and matches the spectrum. So that tells you real quick, if this can adapt that quickly, that it's pretty close to a standard neutral colorway. Now this one, this is a little bit more rosy brown. It's not quite as neutral as this one is, but it's still pretty neutral. This is one that can be worn in a lot of different situations. This one in particular, you know I had to throw in something a little bit different. This one's got a silver mirror on the front as well, so it really cuts that darkness and glare intensity down while still being soft and neutral to the eyes. So. You can see there, this one's a little bit closer to gray between the rosiness and that yellow, or not yellow, but that silver mirror on the front. So it cuts that intensity down pretty noticeably, and you can see it gets a lot lighter as you get away from that mirror. And the mirror is the gradient on this, by the way, not the actual tint. So you can see very soft, very neutral to the eyes, easy to wear, but still going to block some of that blue spectrum haze, which is what Again, that's kind of the spectrum that causes the strain and the most difficulty in kind of overcast, hazy, foggy situations. This is really good. This one in particular is good on a day. We have a ton of them in Tennessee. I don't know about you guys, but where it's just a little bit of overcast, there's some rain here and there. Sometimes you hit straight sun with not a cloud in sight. Sometimes you're driving in a rainstorm while there's not a cloud in sight is really good for that. This, we'll call this the Tennessee tent. How about that? We'll just, we'll, we'll go that direction with it. Now, just to throw in here again, I've got this very soft neutral gray here. This one, just your very, very standard, very easy to work with. Darkens things down, doesn't really change the spectrum at all. Nice and dark outside, nothing crazy going on. No weird shifts in color or spectrum. You can still perceive reds and blues really well without like this with the browns you're going to cut that blue down you're going to enhance reds and yellows a little bit more i know a lot of trout fishers that like that in particular because it helps in spotting the trout that is a thing i have been told i did not know that is a thing because i'm not much of an outdoorsman but now you know that too because i know that and i had to share it anyways so as i mentioned 
you guys probably have guessed, I'm big on these contrast enhancers. This one is probably one of my favorites. Even my neutral grays I wear, I've got a blue mirror on, and that shifts the spectrum a little bit more warm, causing some of the same contrast enhancing effects you get in these yellow browns without really shifting the spectrum as much. So there's a lot of different ways to get these results, but there's also so many different colors and so many different ways to control the light spectrums out there. It's really hard to just pick one. And you'll see probably a buddy of mine in here comment later, and we've talked about this in some other comment sections about how it's really hard to just have a couple pairs of sunglasses and really get the maximum performance and benefits. You know, some people carry five, six, or seven. I know he's one of them. I usually keep three or four around, plus whatever I have in the shop and at home and switch around between and have fun. And my wife's got, God, I think she keeps about 30 and rotates between several. It's interesting. So we all have a lot of different sunglasses that we love and keep around. Or my wife, she has about 30, yeah, she keeps four or five, several different ones around at a time. I've got friends that have hundreds of pairs of sunglasses and keep several in rotation. Now, they don't wear a prescription, so they can get by with it a little bit easier than some of us. You guys know, right? It's way more expensive to get prescription sunglasses than grab one off of a shelf. Even the really nice ones off of the shelf are a lot less when you don't have to put a prescription lens in them. Anyways, I'll stop boring you guys on that for now. I will catch you next time. Now, if you liked this video, definitely like, subscribe, and follow along. We talk about this fun stuff all the time. At least I think it's fun. If you do, definitely join along because we'll keep having fun with it. Take care. I'll catch you next time.